Hey guys, so last week we talked about how the coronavirus is likely to affect your SAT or ECT testing schedule, and this week we're gonna talk more broadly about how it could affect your admissions calendar in general. My name is Brooke. I've been teaching the SAT and the ACT and doing college consulting for over a decade and a half. Just a note for those of you on our online courses, I know I announced this last week, but I just wanted to let you guys know that if coronavirus has affected your SAT or ACT test dates and you signed up for the test and then your test got moved or canceled and your course is expired by the date that they've canceled it, we will extend for free your course till whenever you are allowed to take the test again because we wanna make sure that you guys are covered and we know that there's stuff that's going on that's out of your control. And if you're like, what's your online course? SuperTutorTV.com, we have two online courses for the SAT and the ACT. They're, they're video-based prep courses, they're like over 100 hours of footage. It's like me on YouTube, but like super lots of me. And I go through the whole like ACT and SAT with you. So if you're wondering what that is, that's what that is. The other thing is on this COVID-19 stuff, when interesting information comes out or when we know about more, SAT or ACT cancellations or reschedulings or whatever. I post articles regularly if you follow us on Twitter or Facebook, so be sure to follow us and I will make sure that I keep you guys in the know as much as I can. Cool. What's going to happen to college admissions given that everybody is living in this world that feels like it's shut down? I don't know where you are right now, but where I am right now, our world has basically shut down and no one is allowed to go out at night and nobody's allowed to gather in large gatherings and all the schools are closed and it's like the apocalypse at least if you try to go to target and find hand sanitizer supposedly LAUSD which is like the second largest school district in the country the public school system in LA has apparently made a partnership with KCET which is the public television station and they're playing educational programming for kids all day, which is not online school, by the way, because you can't learn calculus from a Ken Burns documentary. But that's kind of what's going on in LA. And we'll see how long this lasts for. It's been like a week or two now. This is kind of crazy town. We don't quite know how it's all gonna go and how long it will last. We're not totally sure. In terms of how long it will last though, we could predict a little bit. I would say it's probably gonna be at least a couple months. That's because the CDC has recommended that schools close for a minimum of eight weeks. So that's where we're at right now. The thought of them reopening after two weeks, which is what some hopeful people have thought, I think is probably slim chances, but we'll see what happens. In any case, if we wanna look for clues as to how long this might last, we can look both at the scenarios around the world as well as history. We know in China, some schools have started to reopen in areas that are not very affected by the virus but they were closed for over a month and a half. And schools in highly impacted areas in China continue to remain closed. So for those schools, it could be months and months. We have no idea. It could go through the fall. We really don't know. We know what happened in the flu pandemic of 1918, which is that 40 out of 43 cities in the United States closed their public schools for anywhere from around a month to maybe three or four months, depending on the city. And I realized not every high school in the United States is closed. I realized different geographic areas are responding to this crisis in different ways and they're probably impacted in different ways. So in terms of how COVID-19 is going to affect your personal college admissions calendar, there are several things that we can talk about or take into consideration. The first thing that I wanna tell you guys is I know you're all worried about like, oh my God, like what if I can't take my AP tests in May? Then like, how am I gonna get my AP scores in? Or my SAT is delayed and I was planning to take it in March and get it over with and now I can't get it over with. But that really doesn't need to be at the top of your worries because everybody's in the same boat. If your SAT is getting canceled, a lot of other people's SATs are getting canceled. In any case, I think what, what you can actually look at is the fact that colleges and universities are probably more deeply affected by this stuff than even a lot of high schools. Colleges and universities shut down or move to online only courses much more quickly than US high schools have. And at this point, the kind of lay of the land is, is no colleges are doing any campus visits. There are no tours and there are no admit weekends. What that means for your college admissions cycle is you may have to make decisions about where you want to go to college without ever actually setting foot on campus, which can be hard. And not only that, even if you could set foot on campus, nobody's on campus. So whatever the spirit, the vibe, whatever it is of that college or university is, there's no way to preview it. There's no way to see it in person, at least. Another consequence, could be that this could impact admission cycles and dates. Not a lot of schools have released official policies 
on COVID-19 because it's so early, even for the next admission cycle. But we can take some hints from how they've adapted based on transfer applications, which, have, which are due usually like mid-March, so right around now, and also graduate programs, which often have later deadlines. So we can look at what some colleges have done to, in response to those programs and the situation, and we might be able to apply those lessons to what they're gonna do for undergrads. We don't know yet. One thing that I've seen is that they've allowed for a little bit more flexibility in testing policies. For example, if you're in a country that has not offered TOEFL or IELTS administrations, you can take the test online with Duolingo, with another company, right? So they're accepting these online language tests for single admission cycles. I've seen that from colleges like Boston University for graduate programs and from some other universities for transfer programs. The other thing that's been happening with transfer applicants is that they've been extending deadlines at some colleges and some colleges have also just made a note and said, hey, if you've been affected by COVID-19, shoot us an email, let us know, and we will adjust accordingly. The general rule of thumb is I don't think colleges want to penalize you for this. And that's good to know as high school students, they want to treat everyone the same. We're all going to figure this out together. We're all crossing our fingers and trying to stay healthy. So hopefully that's a message of namaste. It will be okay. The bigger issue that we're facing right now is how long is this all going to go on and how long is your high school going to be closed because that's really what's impacting you guys the most. If you can't finish junior year, you can't start senior year. If you can't finish senior year, you can't leave high school and go to college. So that's kind of the bigger issue that we're looking at right now is like how is this going to rock the world of all of our academic calendars. If it's rocked a couple of months, we can probably play makeup games, right? The other thing that's likely to happen is the longer this goes on, the more school districts are likely to try to figure out and adopt the kind of practices that private schools are using to actually keep you guys in school and to keep you guys on a functional kind of online schooling program. Some high schools, some private high schools are equipped so that as they close their doors physically, they are able to offer fully online classwork and your teacher can teach you 100% from home and everybody logs in and you have a nice computerized system and everyone has access. And then there are other high schools that are public high schools where they just don't have the resources to do that. Again, I'm using LA because that's where I am. 25% of the students in the Los Angeles Unified School District do not have access to internet at home. About 50% do not have dedicated access to a computer. So what that means is that they don't have the resources to even do online classes for everyone. And they're scrambling to try to make that happen. They're scrambling to try to get laptops in a bunch of students' hands. But there's going to be gaps and it's not going to be seamless. And it's not what other schools are capable of doing. So there's going to be some inequity in how this all plays out. And depending on how long this lasts, it could mean that your high school calendar is adjusted. And if it gets adjusted enough, it might also affect college admissions calendars. We're not sure yet. And the other thing that I know a lot of you are aware of is this could affect your extracurricular involvement. You can't win the Junior Olympics if Junior Olympics get canceled, right? You can't be the best at a debate tournament if that tournament never happens and they're all verboten. So to stand out in the activities game, it's going to be harder. Like, how do you stand out? How do you become quirky? In any case, what I would predict is that there are going to be months of makeup over the summer that a lot of schools are going to be in session this summer if we're back on it by then. If we're not back on it by then, we're looking at potentially year-round school as soon as we do get back to school. If it's not this summer, it would be the following summer. It could also mean extended school days. You might be going to school for longer so that teachers can cover more material in less time. We're really not sure all of the impact, but as you can see, as we figure all of that out, that then could push deadlines from colleges and universities. Obviously, right now, they're keeping everything where it is. There's no reason for them to change anything up. But as you saw with some of my examples with like transfer applications where colleges were accepting them a few weeks later, we might find that in the next admission cycle for you guys who are juniors, that early action or early decision isn't November 1st. Maybe it becomes December 1st. We might find that the standardized test deadline is after your application deadline. Colleges may be looking more at your sophomore and early junior grades. Those might come into play more because other grades might not be available. So we're not totally sure what's going to happen, but prediction-wise, it's really a matter of how soon are we going to have a vaccine and how soon are we going to have a cure if there is one for COVID-19. 
and that's going to dictate when we return to normal. And the sooner that is, the more normal your schedule is going to be in all of this. And the later that is, the more disruption there's going to be. But trust me, the disruption isn't just going to be your college admissions calendar. It's going to be your entire schooling. So there's a lot bigger of an issue that you're looking at. And in the meantime, what can you do? Well, if you're sitting at home and you don't have as much school and you don't have all your activities, you know, you can prepare for that SAT or that ACT. We've got tons of free videos here on supertutortv.com, whether you have a budget of zero dollars or whether you want to spend money on prep, whatever it is that you want to do. We've got options for everybody. So check it out, you know, use the most of your time, find things to do, explore your intellectual curiosity as much as you can. I hope you guys found this thoughtful or insightful. Stay safe out there, everybody. I hope you're staying healthy and we'll see you next time on Super Tutor TV. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye-bye.